Hi folks, so some time ago I did a video talking about a new policy that Ubuntu were bringing in where they would survey uh, various different pieces of information from new installs. And there was a lot of discussion, a little bit of controversy around the issue, and generally my thoughts on the subject were it depended entirely on how they did it. Uh, so it depended on how anonymous the data was, how identifiable it was, uh, but also more specifically about uh, your consent and your options, you know, there within. So, for example, if it gave you a uh, an affirmative choice, if it came up and, and just said, do you want to send data, yes or no, then I would consider that to be perfectly fine, really. It's a perfectly reasonable request, and if it helps benefit the operating system, then that's absolutely fine. But it does need to come with a caveat that it's uh, that you can opt out and, it, and that it's easy to opt out and that you're presented with an option to opt out. So uh, I have predominantly been using the variants of Ubuntu. I've not really been uh, touching Ubuntu uh, vanilla or the, the, you know, the flagship version of Ubuntu um, as of late because it's, I don't know, the GNOME desktop just doesn't excite me as much as it used to. And I've got to say, I've got Ubuntu Mate now on the Triton and it's an absolute dream, although the uh, Ubuntu Mate also does a very similar data collection policy and it does it in a rather responsible uh, way that I can respect. So today, um, uh, Ubuntu, the Ubuntu blog uh, on the 22nd, is it 22nd today? Yeah, it's 23rd, so yesterday. Um, the Ubuntu blog talked a little bit about some of the data that was collected. Now, just before we get into that, I've got a virtual machine of Ubuntu up here, and this is it. This is the screen that you're presented with on the first launch of the Ubuntu operating system, and this is it. So when, it, when they say opt-in by default, it basically means that this bullet point is selected over that. So I think that really is, in, in my personal opinion, a fine uh, request in terms of, of data collection. Now, there is one significant criticism about that, and that's if you select no and then carry on, it does actually uh, tell you know the upstream uh, data collectors that you have decided not to submit that data. So some people have, have taken an issue with that. Um, but I suppose, truth be told, when it comes to Ubuntu as an operating system, Privacy isn't really one of their sort of uh, main goals here, is it? It's really to be a much more standard-based operating system. Like There are better operating systems in the Linux world when it comes to, to privacy. Like, for example, Tails. If you want to be like completely anonymous on the internet, Tails OS is really the operating system that you really want to look towards. Ubuntu is a much more run-of-the-mill day-to-day um, operating system, and whereas it is much more privacy-respecting than Windows, it's very hard not to be, isn't it? And um, and and that, and that doesn't mean that it has to take it to the uh, to the extreme. So all in all, I think that Ubuntu and Canonical have actually done a, a, about as good a job as you can expect when it comes to responsible data collection. Now, the reason that I've got it in a virtual machine here is that you can show the first report. So this is the information that it just sends upstream. It gives you the information. Uh, it gives you so it, it's telling me that I'm running it in virtual box. So that's quite good. Uh, it gives me some information about the BIOS. Uh, it tells me a little bit about the uh, CPU. Yes, I am running an AMD. I don't know what authentic there means. Family 23 Modern 1, so I assume that uh, that gives it a little bit more information. AMD 64, I've dedicated this virtual machine about 4 gigs of RAM. Um, that is the screen resolution I've got in this virtual machine here. Uh, I set it to auto login true, live patch false. So it's giving what I personally consider to be not really identifiable information. There's not really enough here for it to be uh, identifiable, um, especially when it's collected on such a, you know, like the more data that is collected, the less identifiable it is. So uh, from that perspective, it certainly makes sense to ask all people uh, or all new installations this information rather than just, uh, you know, choosing people to opt in in a more specific way because then you get a degree of selection bias, which can is in some ways... Um, you know, reduce the, the level of anonymity of the data. But anyway, that aside, um, yeah, well, uh, okay, we might as well send the uh, send the information upstream, and uh, there you go. And then there's some stuff from the software center. Okay, so let's take a look at the blog post where they publish some of the desktop metrics. I will put a link to it down in the descri description below. It's worth a read. It's pretty interesting here. Uh, so the opt-in rate is 67%. That's two-thirds of people 
I don't know what to expect. You know, I, I didn't really know what to expect out of that number. To be honest, I suppose it's a little bit higher than I would have expected. People being sort of, you know, a lot of people who do choose Linux do chen- tend to err on the side of privacy when given the uh, the choice. But uh, 67% seems that there is a significant number of people uh, willing to play along with this. Uh, installation duration. So I can't, I really can't remember how long the installation takes, but it really doesn't take uh, very long for me. So it looks like we've got like maybe 17, uh, 17 minutes seems to be the the average time there. And uh, yeah, and it doesn't seem like there are many computers that take longer than than 20 minutes there. Um, so that's pretty good. I, yeah, looks, looks good to me. Uh, what else have we got? So yeah, I know it says here the average desktop uh, install takes 18 minutes. So that's really not very long. I remember when when uh, operating installs, operating system installs used to take so much longer. So here we go: uh, fresh installs versus upgrades, installer options. So what we've got here. Uh, so 90% of people wanted to download updates on install. That just makes a lot of sense because I don't think there's is is there a reason for running a system that isn't fully updated. Uh, maybe if it's an offline system, but uh, but it's yeah this this ninety percent certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I'd be interested to know some of the reasonings behind the uh, the ten percent that didn't. Maybe they just want to do uh, do an upgrade after the fact. So fifty three percent wanted resti- restricted add ons and twenty eight point two five percent selected the auto login. Now I was actually quite surprised that uh, a number uh, the auto login number was as high as it was. Um, however, uh, Popey did remind me that that could uh, likely be a lot of people who are running virtual machines where security is not their top issue. Um, and then that would make uh, a lot of sense as to why restricted add-ons seemed to be on the lower side. I would have thought that it might be closer to the, the download updates there because um, not installing the restricted add-ons, I personally, I find actually restricts the usability of your system quite a lot, especially when it comes to uh, to surfing the internet. So I'm quite surprised to see that only about 50% of people decided to install the restricted add-ons. Again, we don't know if that uh, has anything to do with the fact that people might then go and install restricted add-ons further on down the line after the fact. Um, but yeah, so those are those are some of the statistics there. None of them are completely out of the, you know none of them have uh, have completely uh, wowed me or anything like that. These are all within the realms of of expectations. I say um, the number of CPUs um, again the single CPU is actually very common there. Disk partitioning. This is an interesting one. So it seems that most people decide to go for the new can pave option. That's what I tend to do as well. Um, I know that uh, you can do for when when I do things like uh, I, I I never do installation alongside other operating systems for a start I don't tend to be a big fan of running more than one operating system on a computer I don't tend to see the point um especially it comes from a pragmatic point of view I mean I suppose there are there are people that might develop on different platforms and from a developer standpoint it makes a lot of sense to install multiple operating systems on the same machine or if you're testing uh, it makes a lot of sense to do that but uh, in that case, I tend to just do uh, custom partitioning then, uh, which would be manual. Oh, so manual is 21.89%. So that would make a lot of sense. I often do a lot of manual partitioning, not so much these days because um, because you know it's, it's usually having a home on a separate partition, but because backing up is, is a lot easier these days and disk space is a lot cheaper, it doesn't tend to, to bother me so much. Um, and, and I just tend to go with whatever the distribution recommends. Sometimes I, I kind of feel like, well, maybe the distribution might have some, you know, some reason for, for partitioning the way that it does. So I often let the, the distribution decide these days. Um, but yeah, when I, whenever I don't do that, it tends to be a new can pave because that's that's just simple. It's straightforward. You can try upgrading, but there's always a possibility that upgrading might go wrong, and then then you you might as well have to new can pave anyway. And it tends to get you know. So yeah, I think people just go for the simplest option there and erase device and install. If you want a low maintenance system, you're probably going to be using the long term support release of a distribution anyway, and then nuking and paving every what, two to four years, really isn't that much of a big deal, I guess. Maybe that's when you'd expect it. Although maybe once you've got a, a distribution running for two to four years, you you might actually be more inclined to upgrade because uh, because you've got it just the way that you want it and you probably can't remember all the various tweaks and things that you've changed over the over the years. So, hmm. But yeah, no, that's, that is a, um, a layout that I guess I would, I would expect perhaps might have... Um, might have expected to see more people encrypting. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that uh, encryption LVM is as low as it is. 
uh, displays. This is another interesting one. So my display actually is a 1440 by 900. And the reason I've got it is because it's an old monitor and it's probably more than 10 years old and it works fine. I just can't bring myself to throw out perfectly working hardware, <laughs> even if it means getting a, you know, a better resolution monitor. It's just like it works and it's fine and, I, you know, uh, and it's a bit of an odd resolution, but there you go. So um, let's have a look here. So what is 1440 by 900? Is that even? Yeah. For, oh, wow. That's no. Wow. I'm, I'm, oh, there it is. There it is. So so I'm quite far down. So, um, yeah. And also, so most laptops are uh, 1366 by 768. I actually had a TV that was 1360 by 768 of all resolutions as well. So that was, uh, is that one there? 1360, maybe not, who knows. Um, but yeah, and it's the standard HD 1080 that uh, that is the highest. There aren't really that many um, 4Ks there, isn't it? 4K, hmm, interesting. So I think that's the that's the takeaway from it, isn't it? Is that uh, is that uh, yeah, high DPI and 4K are not really commonplace yet. Um, I I don't know much about the pricing of those monitors, but uh, yeah, are often priced much higher. And I don't know. I guess I don't see the true benefit of, of of having a high DPI monitor. It just seems to be more work for the graphics card. And I guess I don't appreciate the extra resolution. Um, but that's just a, that's just a bit of a personal preference. RAM now RAM's interesting because I honestly expected 16 gig to to be first or second out of this one. Uh, I suppose with four gig that might be like your netbooks, your small machines, your secondhand laptops. Uh, maybe uh, there are a fair number of ThinkPads that have four uh, four meg, uh, eight, and then yeah, 16 because of you know that's how the uh, the RAM dims tend to go. So I think I've got 16 in this machine with two more um, spaces uh, to go. So I could easily get up to 32, if not higher. But the, look at 32, there's only, only, there's not that many on 32. So, so there we go. And Ubuntu, yeah, that's a pretty decent spread. Uh, quite a few in Europe, obviously a big, uh, a big circle there in, uh, in North America. Not very many Australians, very small in Australia. So, um, interesting interesting there so um, yeah and that's the end of the article so I don't really I suppose have too much to say on the uh, on the statistics or the uh, the procedure other than that I felt that they did it about as good as, as you can really expect from uh, from canonical and Ubuntu um, out of all the statistics I can't say there were any that, that massively surprised me although I suppose the lack of, of 4k monitors might have done but then again there might be a lot of people out there that just don't see the benefit just like like I don't see the benefit I'm not entirely sure so um, anyway guys let me know your thoughts on the uh, on the metrics down in the uh, comments section below and uh, yeah I will link to the article so you guys can peruse at your leisure interesting stuff and uh, yeah I just wanted to do a little bit of a video on it because I did sort of do a video uh, before uh, Canonical and Ubuntu decided to uh, implement this policy and I think all in all they did it they did it rather well. And I think that, or at least I hope, that the information that they garnered from this can actually help benefit um, benefit the operating system and, uh, and Ubuntu and Linux as a whole. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.